you doing today? Doing well. Yeah. How about you? Uh, good. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. This is Justin with the Three Geeks. Another conversation. We have James Kerwin here. Um, James, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Uh, um, well, uh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a film director, uh, sometimes writer. Uh, I got my start, uh, back in, uh, in, in I went to film school at TCU in Dallas, Fort Worth. Sure. And, uh, I worked a little bit in the film industry there, uh, kind of as a PA a grip, so forth. So I eventually worked my way to the point where I uh, directed a short film there. And um, uh, it uh, kind of made a splash on the festival circuit that got me representation. I, I moved out to L.A. How was that? How was the move? What that? It always it always interests me when people make that such a big life commitment. You know what I mean? At least to me, it's a big shift, right? Between TCU to L.A. Is that a pretty yeah? Happy one? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, actually, and sure. um, I had always, uh, you know, since around high school, I guess I realized that I kind of wanted to go into, that I really wanted to go into into filmmaking. Um, I wanted to kind of sp- do that and be in astrophysics as well. That sounds hard. <laughs> um, yeah. And so when I went to TCU, I started a double major, and I realized pretty quickly that that was not going to work out, that I was going to be in school for a very, very long time. Um, but (laughs) if I did that, so, so I focused on the filmmaking, but that's my first love. It's what I kind of always wanted to do. So I always knew I was going to wind up in LA. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, I mean, all right. You kind of led into it, but you being so interested in astrophysics, Star Trek continues. Like, I mean, that had been like a dream come true then, right? With some astrophysics stuff going on. Well, yeah, it was, it was, Star Trek Continues was interesting because, you know, it was a fan film. It was not official Star Trek. It was made made during a period of time between when Enterprise went off the air and before Discovery came on and uh, CBS Paramount kind of tacitly allowed um, uh, uh, independent production companies to make their own Star Trek web content. And uh, the idea behind Star Trek Continues was that uh, uh, it would be one of these productions, but it would be staffed both in front of and behind the camera uh, by industry professionals, Hollywood industry professionals. So um, uh, it was, and you know, we had a great time doing it. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was hard work. It was hard to. Uh, one of the challenges of it uh, was directing something in a style that would have been done in 1969, sure. as opposed to the way you would direct something today. So that was an interesting challenge. Um, but uh, I, I did wind up uh, using. Uh, some of my my science. I have to assume knowledge. you would, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because uh, you know fans get pretty uh, pretty up, upset when details are wrong, yeah. and um, especially now. So um, I, I, I use kind of my knowledge both of the franchise and of astronomy and astrophysics in general to kind of uh, m- m- make sure we got things as as correct as we could. Yeah. Always, while always understanding that you're the science is there to serve the story, not the other way around. Sure. So when you have to fudge things for the sake of story, you do. That's all science fiction writing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, I guess with such a big fan base, the Star Trek has was that intimidating at all? Like, I mean, that's a huge IP. You know what I mean? That's. Um, I wouldn't say it was. I wouldn't say it was intimidating. I mean, I yeah. was always aware of. Um, the, the, the weight of um, critique that we were going to get, both positive and negative. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was overall, it was, uh, it was, it was a fun thing to, have, to, to do for a few years. Yeah. Sure. But I wanted to get back to film, really. You know, I mean, it was, sure. it was fun, but it wasn't my first love. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, and you've done a little bit of everything in the industry. I mean, actor, editor, I mean, producer, director, like, do you, writer, do you have, a thing you like to do more than others in terms of that grouping? I mean, I'm not really an actor. Every once in a while, like I've been stuck in, in the background of a shot or something like that. So I'm not, I, I, I did act in college, but other than that, I, no, yeah. no, I'm not an actor. Yeah, no, I would say directing. I mean, directing yeah. is really my thing. I do wind up writing some of the things that I direct and mm-hmm. I wind up directing some things that I haven't written. Um, I do like editing. I like, if I'm directing something, I do want to be heavily involved in the post-production process either as an editor or sitting right there with the editor so i do tend to edit the things that i direct mm-hmm. um uh, but you know producing it's it's really not i have tremendous respect for producers because 
It is an incredibly difficult organizational managerial job. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I, I don't think I, I could ever actually do. Um, I've been given producer credits on some things, but um, there are more honorary credits than anything because, man, that is a tough, tough job. I have nothing but respect for those people. Sure. Well, that makes a ton of sense. And you mentioned something about the things you direct, you'd also having a heavy hand in editing. Is that a pretty common practice among directors? Is that Do you think that's a pretty common trait? In film, yeah, uh, not so much in television. Uh, mm -hmm. In television, you know, you if you direct an episode, you do one cut, you turn it over to the editor and the producers, and that's the last time you see it gotcha. until it airs. Gotcha. Uh, on film, there are directors like Robert Rodriguez who always edits his own material. Um, Soderberg often does. Um, sometimes, uh, even ones who don't tend to be very heavily involved in that process. Mm -hmm. um, That makes sense. Yeah, sure. Um, what directors kind of do you take a lot of inspiration from? I assume you have a lot of some favorites that you really kind of draw from. Um, I mean, I, I have to say, I mean, I know this is a cliched answer, but Stanley Kubrick is, sure. is the greatest. I mean, he was the greatest. Uh, he's my favorite. 2001 was an amazing film. All of his films are, are amazing. Um, uh, Ridley Scott. I love his stuff. Yeah. I love a lot of Soderbergh's work. Um, sure. I love some of his more obscure stuff, maybe that not many, not not everyone knows about. Um, uh, uh, working today, like in in television, um, I really admire a lot of the directors who work on on Discovery, Toon Day, Jonathan sure. Frakes. These guys, um, they've got incredible eyes. Uh, so. Um, and uh, and actually, Bryce Dallas Howard is kind of up and coming as a director herself, and she's doing a knockout job of of and, and, and the things that she's been doing. So, I have a lot of uh, admiration for her work as well. That's awesome. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, In Isolation? I see you're a host for it. I was just kind of curious. Oh yeah, yeah. That that was a podcast uh, when when COVID started. Nicola Bryant from Doctor Who and I uh, nice. started running our own podcast. <laughs> just for the heck of it. Yeah. Um, uh, this was back in 2020 when lockdown was un in full force and both here and in England, no yeah. one was leaving their homes. And so we did like, a, I think it was like a 16 episode video podcast sure. over the course of several months, uh, interviewed some celebrities, talked about our own backgrounds and things. I interviewed her. She interviewed me. It was just, it was just for, <laughs> for fun. kicks. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Is there a, an episode you like and, or a conversation you had that was very memorable from that? Um, oh, man. I don't, I don't know if I can single just... Yeah, it's hard. I know. I've asked house. that before in the yeah, podcast. It's a hard to, thing. I'd have to go sure. back through them. I haven't watched them in a couple of years, so I yeah, have to... That's fair. Uh, so what are, you, what are you dipping your toes into now? Like, What are you working on? Uh, well, I have a feature in development right now. Uh, the last feature that I did for Entertainment One was called Yesterday Was a Lie, and it was a science fiction noir film that had a lot of kind of metaphysical themes and questions about the human condition, human relationships, human consciousness, how we fit into reality as a whole. Pretty big questions. Yeah, I was um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then after that, I I, I kind of took a break from film directing. I did Star Trek Continues for a while. I did a couple of short films. Um, but a lot of people have just been like, hey, when are you going to do another feature with, with that explores some of these really interesting sci-fi type questions? Um, and so I've spent the last couple of years, especially during COVID, um, developing a project, developing a script called Contra Coup, which is a psychological, uh, science-themed psychological mystery, I guess I could put it, with okay. a sci-fi lean to it um, that explores some of these same questions, but just in a very, very different modern way. Okay. Um, and, uh, so we raised, uh, most of our financing for that, but we're trying to raise a little bit more. It's being produced through a nonprofit. Oh. Um, so uh, we're doing an Indiegogo, uh, campaign right now that we're in the middle of, oh, awesome. uh, to, uh, to try to, to top off our budget for production right now. So I encourage people to check that out if they're interested in being a part of the production. Oh, you should, uh, can you shoot me the link to it and we'll, we'll post it as a part of the, when we, like, shoot absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Right, right now or after? Well, whenever, whenever, when this is done, doesn't matter. Okay, the, cool. yeah. No urgency, just like whenever yeah, we, right. yeah, we could. But no, that's great. I, I, have you done an Indiegogo before for stuff like this? Have you? Um, I, so yeah, Star Trek Continues was also produced through a nonprofit, and uh, it did uh, a few crowdfundings. Uh, we did, we did, I think, two Kickstarters for it and one Indiegogo campaign. 
um, over the course of the uh, the eleven episodes that we did. Um, so yeah, yeah, I have some I have some experience yeah, sure doing do. it. I didn't run those, but uh, <laughs> I was I was heavily involved. So uh, in, in running it, have you learned anything? Anything you can share? Glean glimmers into that process for folks now that you're. Kind of uh, more well, I, I, I'm actually not completely running this one myself. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the people who is, but um, it, it's uh, it's an interesting process because you know, and and, and especially, well, first of all, we reached out to to Indiegogo yeah. and got a lot of assistance and advice from them, which was very very generous of them uh, in kind of helping us do this. I, I would say, you know, one of the important things is promoting the campaign in advance, letting people know that you're going to do it, going to people who have expressed an interest in your productions and in contributing to your productions of the yeah. past, kind of having some of them lined up in advance. Those are all really important things, I think. Awesome. So uh, how far away are you from your goal? And when do we start shooting? Like this is exciting. We're pretty, we're, we're still pretty far. Um, yeah. I think, okay. I think we're about a, a, a quarter there so far. Okay. Um, we're not even, we, we, it's a two month campaign. We're a couple weeks into it right now. Um, so we have a ways to go. Um, uh, so we're doing okay. And like I said, this is, this is a top off. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. It is not, we, we had already raised a significant amount of our budget before, before this um but uh but we still have a ways to go and as far as production goes you know we're eyeballing sometime early to mid 2023 um mm -hmm. it really a lot of it depends on covid re um, sure. compliance restrictions sure. uh because productions right now um the, the covid compliance is 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 a little more lax than it was in at the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but you never know where things are going to go. And right now, COVID compliance is, is a huge expense for productions. Um, so, I mean, if you're a really tiny, tiny, tiny film, and by tiny, I mean, you know, you're shooting a movie in your living room with a couple of your friends with a, yeah. a, a, a little DSLR. I mean, that's one thing. Um, uh, obviously, you don't have to worry about COVID compliance for that. Mm -hmm. um, but then the huge, big hundred million dollar studio films, you know, they've got millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars to spend on COVID compliance officers and, right. and protocols and things like that. The mid range, lower budget films don't have that, you know, mm -hmm. it would blow our entire budget to, mm -hmm. to do COVID compliance on ours. So we really do frankly have to wait for some of those restrictions to, sure. to go away entirely before we're able to. So we just have to keep an eye on them. That makes a ton of sense. It's, it, uh, I'm sure that's frustrating, though. It, I'm sure it's killing a lot of smaller projects. To, to I your, know, to I your know. point, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that's it right. is. It's it, I mean, it's COVID, man. It, it, yeah, it, I mean, it's your health. Everybody so. took a hit. Everybody yeah. took a hit uh, on it. Um, yeah. But it's important that we stay vigilant about it, and that uh, you know, I'm not knocking these compliance. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, very, yeah, very, very, that way, very yeah. critical. Yeah. We have to have them. It's just an unfortunate yeah. truth. Yeah. Yeah, your health is more important than any project we're working on, for sure. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it just still stinks. There's, I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of projects in limbo right now because of it. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, I noticed you had been a part of a bunch of different like film festivals and things. Like that. Any any fun stories with that? Any like a festival grand like any different prizes? Anything that's fun? I always like to hear about festival stories and or being a part of those award shows and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, several of the films that I've done have played in festivals. Um, when the train stops is a Western short that I did recently and it did, it did quite well in the festival circuit. And then yesterday was a lie um, before uh, E1 released it theatrically and on, on DVD um, back about 10 years ago, it was just past its sure. 10th anniversary. Um, it played for about a year on the festival circuit and did quite well there. And that was good. Uh, I, I had a short film called Midsummer that played on the festival circuit before that, um, and uh, it won. Uh, it won. Uh, the, uh, gosh, what was the name of the festival? I think it was called Crested Butte. It was Ed Zwick, Edward Zwick, the director. Oh, cool! Uh, it was is his film festival, and um, uh, at the time, at least, and uh, we won that. And I remember I went up on stage and accepted the award from him. He presented me the award, and I'm, you know, in my acceptance speech, I made a comment about how growing up I. I uh, uh, was very inspired by his sure. his films, particularly Glory. And he made a comment. He's like, wow, thanks for making me feel old. And I think I actually <laughs> offended him. And I didn't mean to. And he, he like <laughs> left the after it. party and people were like, I think you pissed him off. I was like, I, I, I didn't mean to. Yeah. It, was, it was a genuine way to turn a compliment. I know. Right. Yeah. right, right. So I felt terrible about that. I still do to this day, as you can see. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. That's rough.
<laughs> are those pretty fun though? Like, do you tra- do you travel with your film? Like every fe- every festival your film is shown at, it do depends. you show it to? It depends. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, some festivals will bring you in, some won't. Some you have to pay your own expenses. So, gotcha. I mean, you have to budget that. You have to decide. You know, I mean, th- how much travel is involved is obviously a factor. If they're paying for you to come, is obviously a factor. Um, so you have to weigh all those. I, I probably the the films that I've done that have played in festivals, I probably personally attended maybe half of them. Gotcha. Okay. That's still really sweet. It sounds like a fun time. It's, they're fun. They're great. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, well, a- anything you want to promote? I mean, obviously you're working on a film. We have Indiegogo link. Any social media things you want to kind of call out? Any plugs? Um, yeah, I would say right now, just check that out. If you if you want to check the, the, the film that I had, the feature that I had done before um, for Entertainment One called Yesterday yeah. Was a Lie, it just hit its 10th anniversary a couple of years ago and uh, was picked up by Indie Picks. And they oh, did cool. they did a remaster and re-release of it on Blu-ray. So if anybody's interested in watching that film, I really I'm really proud of it. Um, check that out on Blu-ray on iTunes wherever. Um, uh, yesterday was a live 10th anniversary remastered edition. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I would say look at the Contra Coup Indiegogo campaign. Um, it's like I said, it's it is completely produced by a nonprofit Cinematic Arts Foundation. Um, it's not something that people are, are in this to make a buck on it where it really is art for the sake of art. So if you're interested in that kind of project, if you're interested in being involved in that kind of project on any level, even as a producer, please, please check our campaign out. Uh, mm-hmm. I think right now with as, as many, cr- and I know this sounds self-serving to say, but I really do believe it. I think right now with as many insane things that are going on in the world, um, we shouldn't overlook art. Um, sure. We shouldn't overlook the nonprofit art sector because um, that's the kind of stuff that keeps us sane, I think, during for this sure. time. So, yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, that's wonderful. And we'll definitely have a link um, in anywhere we, you see the podcast or watch the podcast. So thank you very much, James. It was wonderful having you. And uh, thank you. thanks for stopping in. Yeah, absolutely.